Hello, my amazing first grade artists. Today we are continuing to think about the color wheel. Specifically, we're going to think about the colors that are opposites of each other on the color wheel as we make our very own complementary color cats inspired by the artwork of Laurel Birch. Let's get started. For our project today, we are creating cats inspired by Laurel Birch using our secondary colors. You are going to need a piece of paper. You are going to need some crayons and some paint. If those aren't options for you, that's okay. You can use other materials as well. Remember, it's always a good idea to start with pencil, which is what we are going to do. To start off our fabulous cats, we are going to be working with a oval. So I'm going to pick a spot in my paper where I want my cat's head to be, and I'm going to draw a nice oval. Then on top of my oval on each side, I am going to stack a triangle for my cat's ears. If I wanted to, I could put a smaller triangle on the inside. Now as I move into my cat's face, I'm going to use another triangle for my cat's nose. Then I'm going to use a J and a backwards J to make the shape of my cat's mouth whisker area. Instead of doing normal cat eyes, I'm going to do kind of a person eye like we see in the artwork of Laurel Birch. So I am going to do pretty much an oval that has a little bit of a point on each side. Inside, I am going to stack a circle. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of my cat's face. So a curve line and a curve line with a circle on the inside. You can see that my eyes aren't exactly the same and that's okay. You can try your best and see what you come up with. I might add eyelashes to my cat's eyes if I wanted to. Maybe I give my cat some eyebrows. Maybe I repeat some dots to be kind of the whisker marks for my cats. Or I could draw some lines to be my cat's whiskers instead. Now I'm ready to do my cat's body. I'm gonna draw a straight line down on one side and a slightly curved line down to the bottom of my paper on the other side. Then I'm gonna repeat a straight line down towards the middle and another straight line that doesn't quite touch the top but comes pretty much all the way. At the bottom here, I'm gonna do two curved lines for my cat's feet. Over here, I'm gonna make a letter U that curves around town and comes to meet the corner for my cat's tail. If I wanted to, I could have this tail kind of overlap that front leg. If I wanted to, I could add another curved line to be the hind leg of my cat. Both great options. You can decide what you'd like to do. In the tail, the legs, and the body, we are going to be repeating some lines and shapes to create patterns. So I could repeat some straight lines that are going horizontal. I guess these are slightly curved legs of my cat. I could repeat some zigzag lines to create a pattern in the tail of my cat. I could repeat some shapes in the body of my cat. Maybe I repeat hearts. My patterns are filling the whole space. Maybe in this hind leg, I repeat circles to make polka dots. And I am all set. I am going to trace over all of these fabulous lines with a black crayon. I might want to do a little bit of erasing if I did what's called ghosting, where I kind of just go until I get to where I want to be um, before I do the crayon because crayon does not erase so well. It kind of smears um, versus not being erased or erasing nicely. So. I'm going to do a little bit of racing. I'm going to trace with black crayon and then we're going to chat about our next step. Alrighty, now it's time to think about our complementary colors. Complementary colors are opposites on the color wheel. We have several pairs. We have red and green are complementary colors. We have blue and yellow are complementary colors or sorry, not blue and yellow, blue and orange are complementary colors. And we have purple and yellow are complementary colors. You may pick whichever one of these pairs you would like to work with. I'm gonna go with blue and orange because blue is my favorite color and it's always fun to get to work with your favorite color. 
Alrighty. So some of my details that I am gonna be doing with my complementary colors, I'm gonna do with crayon. Some of them I am gonna be painting. It's important though to do the crayon details first so that you can have that fun technique of wax resist. So for my cat, I'm gonna make it mostly blue. So I'm gonna do some smaller details with orange. So I might color in this little triangle with orange. I might color in this little triangle with orange. Maybe I color in the nose with the orange crayon. Maybe I decide to help me out in my painting process and maybe I repeat some fun lines with my orange crayon in the sections that I'll be painting with the orange. We're gonna work with our complementary pairs in an alternating fashion going every other as we paint in our animal, but you're gonna wanna pick one color that your animal is gonna mostly be. So your cat is gonna be either mostly blue or mostly orange. It's either gonna be mostly um, yellow or mostly purple, or it's gonna be mostly red or mostly green. I might do something similar with my lines. Maybe I put a second line of my complementary color crayons next to those black lines that I had drawn to kind of help me out with keeping my paint where I want to go. I might color these in crayon. Maybe these I'll just leave for paint. Once I'm ready to go, I've added any crayon detailing that I want to add in, I will switch to painting. And again, we're painting with just one complementary color pair. So you're going to pick what pair you want to use and stick to it. Whatever color you use to be mostly the color of your cat, you're gonna use the opposite color to paint your background. So since I've decided that my cat is going to be mostly blue, my background is gonna be orange. Alrighty, at this time, I'm gonna fast forward while I paint, and I look forward to seeing you on the other side. When you're all done painting your fabulous cat, find a safe spot for your complimentary cat to dry. Take a picture of it for the fabulous Seesaw and make sure that your workspace is clean. I can't wait to see what you create.